Hey, g'day guys, it's Calvin and Jason from the Cartridge Company in New Zealand. Right, we're going to talk about aftermarket computers and the running of autos. And uh, we're going to go straight to the computer that does have proper transmission control. Okay, so it will run the four speed transmission. It'll actually run other transmissions is fine, but in this case, we're going to work on the non VVTI engine and a four speed transmission. And the computer that we use is a Haltech 2500. So we've made up a loom here for a man in Australia. He also has a set of Calford cams in his vehicle, necessitating some engine control. And at the same time, it makes sense to make the transmission tunable as well because you'll get some big, big gains by doing that. The last one we did was a Zephyr, um, and it had the same setup, UCF20, with the four-speed transmission. I've pretty much made it the same as that Zephyr, so we can run the same tune as a pretty reasonable bass tune. If it does have different cams, such in this case, then it will need to be tuned to suit those cams, but the base file should be pretty close to getting it going. So what do we got here? We've got a computer, that's good. I always recommend a twin wideband, so in this case the Haltech wideband unit. So there's a pair of sensors, a bit of an extension loom, and there is a plug on the loom to check it, which will be, plug it in, it'll be that one. So that just plugs in, where you go, or you can plug in to there, in the ECU, and there just happens to be a power and an earth, 12 volt and a ground in that plug there. This plug has got the gear indicators for the dash. Park, reverse, neutral. Drive, two and one. That's real simple. There's a dash plug. So in there, there's a water temp sensor wire. There's an oil light. Now there's the ability to put, say, a... Uh, Rotary knob on it to change tune if you want to do that. A few other air conditioning trigger wire, a few other bits and pieces in there. A uh, few of them come from the ECU. So you can have it a check light and a taco, for example, and program them with what you want to program them to. Set of relays and fuses in this box. Okay, so we don't plug this into that box, that, that isn't going to work. The, the plug will plug in, but you'll blow shit up. Okay, so we don't do that. This one plugs into this plug. So we built plugs into this one. Quite hard with one hand. We built pretty much a standard set of relays and fuses, but in the case of the Haltech running the auto, We've added, I've added a couple of extra wires for the start inhibit switch. And in this case, the start inhibit switch uh, is taken care of with these relays, okay? That output is for a fan. Up to about 16 to 18 amps. Um, I put a fusion that's a little bit bigger just to allow that spike when it fires up. But sort of the max you want is around that 16 to 18 amps. Fuel pump is the same. Then we've got ignition in, which is that one, and start in. And of course battery power on this one. There's the other side of it, so that can just plug in appropriately to the vehicle on a big wire. This box, that changes the gear signals, so these fellas here, into a single, sig single signal going into this thing. Okay, because this doesn't have enough inputs to take every single gear. So that box takes care of that. Here are some sensors. We're using uh, Bosch pressure and temp sensors. And here's the number two. So here's, one is used for oil pressure and one is used for fuel pressure. And of course, oil temp and fuel temp. Come at the back here, we've got a 65 millimeter grommet the oil pressure would mount into wherever your oil filter is wherever your oil filling is okay 
If you want to run an oil light as well, the oil is on a subloom. So in this case, I've got a pressure sensor. I've got just a normal oil pressure switch for the dash and an air conditioning wire. Fuel pressure, on a UCF20, we hit that with a sander, and then we drill and tap right there in that fuel rail. There's an air temp sensor. This is old Yella's uh, throttle body, but it's been modified to take the air temp right there. Just pushed in the back. Modified appropriately. It can go on the intake pipe as well. Right, let's look over the plugs. Uh, now, this one has got some 360cc injectors and it's got uh, some V6 Toyota coils. So we've got the eight coils out here. Three of them will bolt straight in. This one needs a little bracket to be made. Now make sure you leave this in there. I don't want that wire catching on that trigger that's in there. It does destroy them. I have seen it. There's an earth here. It goes to there. Same on the other side. There's an earth there. This IAC, Idle Air Control Unit, is included. It just plugs in. And injectors. So I'm using the same uh, plug, same Toyota plug, but these are of course a, a bigger injector. It will work with standard injectors, just needs to be tuned appropriately of course. And there's that fuel pressure. It, of course it won't measure pressure, it's not in there, but I'm just testing in this case. And then we've got a purge solenoid. So that's that breather solenoid, which fits generally here. If you're running it, you can use it. If you're not, don't stress, just pop it away. Of course on this side we've, we've got injectors again. And there's the air temp into the back of the throttle body. Now down in the intake manifold, under the intake manifold, there are a pair of Bosch two-wire wideband sensors, knock sensors. Um, so on these looms, I prefer to upgrade to the Bosch knock sensor. And as you can see, I have already fitted the injectors previously. Of course, there's a water temp sensor, and there's, of course, a throttle position sensor, which is going to plug in the throttle body. Coming around the back, we have the earth, and we have this plug here. So that is, goes down to the start trigger, and has the knock sensor. So the knock sensor signal for the left and right, and the ground. This should secure around about here. Probably should put the cam and crank sensors on too. Of course, a little plug for the gauge, water temp gauge. Coming down the front, cam angle sensor. Make sure that isn't touching belts, it can't touch belts or anything. And this one I actually normally run down the back, through the back of here. For testing today, I am just going to go out here like this. My crank sensor doesn't have the little tab on it, so it doesn't click on nicely. And of course then we have that oil loom, which I have discussed. So it does give plenty of options. Uh, oil pressure, oil temp sensor, and it can have a switch and can drive air conditioning. 
It's actually really hard to do with one hand again. And just watch it, I hadn't pushed the little blue lock across, which I hadn't, making it pretty much impossible to put on. Of course, I like to see these pressure sensors in place so you can monitor your oil pressure, monitor your oil temperature, and you've got the computer to do it, so why not use it? Then down the back here, we're going to have the shift selector plug and some transmission wiring. Solenoid plug. In this case, we've got an 8-pin solenoid plug, UCF20. Uh, we've got a speed sensor. That's the front speed sensor. And this one's a, a 5 volt, an earth, and a signal. If you want to put a line pressure sensor into it. And there's the rear speed sensor. That is vital. Okay, that one must be plugged in. This one's actually just going along for the ride. But this is the primary one for measuring the gear changes or when the transmission is going to change gear. So I haven't got the trans attached at the moment. We're just going to tuck that out of the way so it doesn't get caught up. And I will bridge the start inhibit switch or the neutral start switch. Don't really want to put that on the exhaust manifold. Right, this is covered in RNF 100 heat shrink. It can actually handle about 150 degrees. It's solvent resistant, petrol resistant. And that, that pretty much what is required to make it go. Uh, I'll go ahead, I'll put the throttle body on it. I'll put the PCV valve hose on it. We'll get some fuel going in. And we'll fire this thing up and make some noise. Righto. I have fitted the 36 minus 2 crank trigger wheel. I've taken the 12 tooth away, of course, to do that. And at the same time, I've gone through and I've upgraded the software in the ECU, moving from the old ESP system to the newer NSP, which is the same as the Nexus runs. It does some cool stuff. It's got trigger scopes and, and stuff like that. And set it all up, check it's all going to work like it should, and it does. So I'm happy about that. Uh, oh, we haven't run it, have we? We haven't started it. Where did I put my earmuffs? Uh, in the software, I've gone through and I've done things like I've checked that, that this fella, the gear switch, actually does the gear switchy thing and, and tells the ECU that it's switching gears. So that's important. Uh, I've, uh, you can see I've got a coil out so I can check the timing, so I can check the base timing. Uh, but I, I, I was in a hurry, I didn't put the bottom cover in. So I put it on, it's pretty much where I want it to be anyway. So I'm happy enough with that. And then I started up and checks it's running. Now, Please remember that this engine does have a burnt valve on, on number 7. So again, it's really, really easy to make it go. Ignition in is the third wire. And there's oh, earmuffs. This is the brim brim wire. Last fire up on the 2500 here before I pack it up, take it off the engine. 
So that humming is the idle speed control unit. It is normal. Probably one of the annoying things about it, but it doesn't hurt it. It's just it's a little bit noisy with that one. Uh, it is in park. And vroom vroom. Hopefully I've done all the hard work on this and it's really easy to fit at the other end and, and works like it should. There is of course, because I haven't fitted it to the car, there's still a process of um, commissioning, that's the big word for the day, commissioning the loom. Just confirming that the sensors do work like they should. I've tested as much as I can here. Transmission works, shifts work, all those sorts of things do operate as we expect. Here's a, a little bit of uh, setting up the outputs from the computer as required uh, for the different vehicles it could go into and mounting the ECU and the um, CAN Lambda Oh, no, it's a Haltec uh, the twin wideband, WB2 wideband from Haltec So I hope that's been really helpful and uh, I'm sure there'll be some questions in the comments and uh, We'll talk to you again soon. We'll catch you later.